If you're like me and have ever heard scripture taken out of context, then stick around because in this segment, we are going to look at well-known verses that get taken out of context all the time and try and rework it into what it actually biblically means. Coming up on Straight Out of Context. Welcome everyone from wherever you are tuning in from. My name is Ash. I am your host for this show, Straight Outta Context. Thank you for joining in. Uh, I must confess, up until about three years ago, I was happy to be a part of a church environment that didn't mind pulling scripture apart, taking it out of its context to justify whatever point was trying to be made. I was happy to even preach this way Clear example is where there is no vision, the people perish. Therefore, we must have a vision statement that is bold because there's biblical precedent. That's the kind of thing we're looking at in this show. Uh, If you have been in that boat, uh, if you have any stories about scripture that you've heard taken out of context and the story around it that justifies the scripture, I would love to know in the comments below please leave it there so I can uh, I can possibly do it on the show and put it back into its context. And while you're at it, why don't you like, subscribe, ring the bell, tell your friends, get everyone involved in this show because uh, so many people are hearing scripture taken out of context uh, and we want to do right by them by giving them the true understanding uh, of the scriptures. To, to, start this, uh, to start this series off, We're going to be looking at the parable of the lost sheep. Now, the reason I want to do this uh, parable first is because uh, since last year, this has become quite popular in secular movements such as Black Lives Matter. Uh, It became really popular after the events of uh, George Floyd. And so it became a battle cry for both secular and professing Christians to say, we need to support Black Lives Matter. And here is the scripture to do it. Now, The parable that we're looking at, the parable of the lost sheep, can be found in Matthew 18 and Luke 15. We're going to be looking at Luke 15 because that is the scripture that has been taken out of context in social media. So uh, that's the one we're going to look at. Now, there are clear reasons for parables. We know this because we can find those clear reasons in scripture. And what better way to find out the true meaning of a parable than to find out from Jesus himself. So we're going to look up uh, Matthew 13, 10 to 13. It's going to be on the screen as well. Then the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered, uh, he answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to the one who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak in parables. I speak to them in parables. Because seeing, they do not see. And hearing, they do not hear. Nor do they understand. In their hearing, in their seeing, they do not see. In their hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand. Uh, Matthew Henry, who has some great commentary on Scripture, says this about parables. uh, Parables make the things of God more plain and easy to those willing to be taught, and at the same time, more difficult and obscure to those who are willfully ignorant. I really like uh, that definition of parables. So it all started with a tweet, and I think it's a dig at Christians. I don't know the context of it. I apologize. We're talking about straight out of context. I don't know the context of the tweet, but then it got perpetuated and blown up, and uh, this this person on Facebook expanded it uh, to really prod Christians to to join in the fight against oppression and and join the cause of Black Lives Matter. And he says, if you are a Christian and can't hear hashtag Black Lives Matter without feeling the need to respond with a criticism that all lives matter, all lives matter? Wow, okay. Uh, Then 
crack open your Bible and hit up Luke 15. Don't have it handy? Let me summarize. There are a hundred sheep, but one goes missing. Jesus leaves the 99 and goes after the one. But what about us? Don't we matter? Of course the 99 still matter, but they're not the ones in danger. The one is. I'll say it again. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. It's always funny when people confront you with scripture that don't really read scripture. They might have heard it uh, from someone else. I don't know if he knows scripture. I don't know if he's a Christian or anything like that. Uh, but I've had in my experience, especially on the streets, things like that, people try and tell me what scripture says to support things, but they can't ever find it. They don't know it. But it's always funny. So something like this, uh, they're trying to justify and explain that Christians should support an anti-God movement in the name of God because passages like Luke 15 say we should. But my question is this. If, is this what the parable is speaking about? When Jesus shared these words, did he mean to go support the oppressed and fight the bigotry and the, the patriarchy and the cis male whatevers, the police brutality, the slave ownership through history, reparations, whatever else we want to group into it? Is this what this parable is about? And the Bible is clear on advocacy, absolutely. But is this what this story is about? Is this what this passage is about? And I don't want to downplay that we have some serious issues in this world, uh, mainly sin, and we need to address that. But I want to know, is this what Jesus meant? And if it's not what he meant, then how are we okay with changing what Jesus said and meant to fit into our own agenda? How can any professing Christian be okay with that? So why don't we crack open our Bibles and hit up Luke 15 together? And we're not going to paraphrase it. We're not going to summarize it. We're going to read it in its context. And the context can be found in the first verse. Now, the, the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him, Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing, Big word, we should learn it, should know it in its context. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Yep. It's about the joy that is found in heaven over one sinner who repents, over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Let's, let's end the show here. I, I, just, I don't see how people can take that out of context. Again, the Bible talks about advocacy, absolutely, but this does not. This is not the parable of the dying sheep. This is not the parable of the oppressed sheep. It's not the parable of the social justice sheep. It's not the parable of the white versus black sheep. It's not the parable of the Baba rainbow sheep. Have you any wool? Uh, that was a bad joke. It's, it's the parable of the lost sheep. And it's that descriptor that is so crucial to understanding the context here in Luke 15. What we see here in the entirety of this chapter is that the Pharisees from the very beginning were disgusted with who Jesus ate with. 
It was they were disgusted at who he welcomed in, that he was okay with them drawing near. It says they grumbled, saying this man receives sinners and welcomes them in. It clearly paints the picture that these self-righteous law keepers would never stoop that low to feast with sinners. I want to be pretty blunt here. Anytime, anytime you hear scripture taken out of context to further an agenda, to justify people's positions that are clearly unbiblical, that aren't the intended uh, intended meaning of the, the scripture that they're using, then it is an insult to Christ. And I'm not just talking about from a secular perspective. This comes from the pulpit as well. It's an insult to Christ. So let's look at Luke 15 in its context. There's three parables. I suggest you look it all up. It's a great encouragement to understand the kingdom of God and the rejoicing in heaven. But the parable of the lost sheep is typically viewed as one of redemption for all. That it's not just reserved for a specific group of people, but all can be redeemed in that sense. That Jesus welcomes people from all walks of life. That that it's he's not a God that discriminates against skin color or class and status in a society. He welcomes people from all nations, all backgrounds, all circumstances. He invites them in. The list goes on. What these verses don't do is advocate for temporary focus on those in need of support. Again, scripture does talk about advocacy and we should fight for those things. But if we're to break this guy's Facebook post down, it is suggested that black people are the lost sheep because they are vulnerable. Therefore, they need our support because everyone else, the 99, is already safe. But we've already established that that's not what's going on here. It's about redemption. And so if we look at the context, in this parable, there are the sh- there's the shepherd and then there's the flock. Now, typically, sheep will flock together because it's the best chance of survival that they have against predators. So they naturally flock together. If they have a shepherd, it means they are obedient to the shepherd's voice. So you could say that the 99 sheep that are safe and are not in danger are obedient. And there is one sheep that is rebellious. And so the shepherd needs to go and save that rebel sheep. Otherwise, it is destined for destruction. It's doomed. It will not survive. Is it starting to turn the wheels a little bit of the context? So looking at the meaning, it's assumed that the 99 are safe because they're obedient. They could be with a hired help. It doesn't give a a clear description of that. But they are safe because they're obedient. They listen to the shepherd's voice and they trust the shepherd. The one that is lost needs saving. Not support, saving. And so the shepherd goes out and seeks out, finds the sheep, saves it, brings it back, and we should rejoice that he does that. Because the lost sheep will never save itself. The lost sheep will never find the the shepherd on its own. Only the shepherd who goes out can save the lost sheep. Otherwise, the sheep is doomed. The same is us. Uh, the same is for us as sinners who are disobedient, who wander off, 
who are lost. We cannot save ourselves. If we could, we'd already be saved. But we need the good shepherd who is Jesus himself. He saves us. Otherwise, we are eternally doomed. And for those who were once lost and are now saved, we should not grumble that he is still saving people, but we should rejoice that another one has been found and another one has been saved. That is the context. That's the point of the story. It's about Jesus and his sacrifice for sinners on that cross that, that saves us because we cannot save ourselves. If he does not act and go out, then salvation will never be achieved. So it's not about social justice. And like I said, we should be concerned about injustices taking place in the world and we should be advocating for life and freedom. But this parable, it's about evangelism and we shouldn't miss that. The battle cry should be, all this injustice has happened in the world. Therefore, Christians, just like Luke 15, we should be going out as spokespeople of Christ to evangelize so that lost sinners may be saved. It's about being on a mission to reach the world for the sake of the gospel, to share the truth of Scripture with all walks of life. It's not just reserved for us. We shouldn't hide it. We shouldn't keep it for ourselves. We should share it in light of the atrocities that happen in this world. And it's not something that you need a specific circumstance for. It's not something that you need to have a certain amount of money for or be in a certain part of culture or you've had to have grown up in a certain family for it. It's regardless of all these things. It's regardless of of your skin tone, your pigmentation and your melanin levels. The gospel is for all people, period. I love what uh, the late R.C. Sproul had to say about this parable. He said, this parable is called the parable of the lost sheep. There are those today who don't believe that anyone is lost. They reject the whole concept of being lost there are those who are universalists who believe everyone goes to heaven automatically. Justification is not by faith or works, but simply by death, because no one is truly lost. Then there are those who say that given enough time, lost people will eventually find their way back. We just need to leave them alone. However, if no one is lost, or if they'll find their way back on their own, then the mission of Christ was a waste of time. The atonement of Christ was not needed. This casts a shadow upon the whole mission of Jesus himself. He goes on to say, When I was a child, it was still normal for the doctor to make house calls, where he would actually come to your house every day. Uh, he would come to your house every day. He would drive through the community and visit children, the elderly, or whoever was sick. Today, if you're sick, the doctor is not going to come to you. You have to go to the doctor. Unfortunately, many churches operate the same way. They hang out a shingle and invite people to come to them. But Jesus didn't have a building. He didn't wait behind closed doors for people to come and see him. His was a ministry of walking around. He went out to where the people were. That's what missions is all about. The ministry of Christ was a ministry of searching for pain and for those who are lost. The, the, the parable of the lost sheep should be a battle cry, not for those who are oppressed, but those who are in need of the Savior. And newsflash, that's everyone. So we should be encouraged by the parable of the lost sheep to go into all the world preaching the gospel so that people will come to know the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you come against scripture that gets taken out of context, if you're in a, a conversation with someone and they say a verse out of context, 
definitely be humble about it. I haven't been in the past. Uh, but it might be easy to get scripture wrong and they might not be trying to be deceptive. They just might have heard it along the way. So a great thing to do is apply these four principles of hermeneutics. One, that scripture interprets scripture. Cross-reference. Does this fit into the overarching story of redemption that's from Genesis to Revelation? Context interprets scripture. If I put this into the whole context of, of what's being said, does it mean what I think it means? Intent interprets scripture. Well, with the parable of the lost sheep, well, with parables, we know what the intent is. We read it in Matthew 13. And the clear interprets the obscure. If there's something that's a little hazy, look to other parts of scripture that shed light in it, on it. A lot of the time you can find Old Testament passages that get brought to light in the New Testament. They usually say, as it is written, it gives us a, a, a light of, of uh, how to read and interpret scripture. But if you are worried about advocacy, I, I, want to, uh, I want to encourage you with two verses. One is James 1, 27, which says, Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. And the other is Micah 6, 8. He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? I hope that this has been an encouragement for you. Uh, if Again, if you've got a scripture that's been taken out of context and a story that goes with it, please leave it in the comments below. Uh, if you know of someone that has tried to justify the position of Black Lives Matter with this scripture, please share this with them. Uh, so I hope that it does shed some light on the situation. Uh, and again, I, I want to encourage you to, to look at scripture in its context because context is key. Uh, so until next time, see you later.